Hello everybody and welcome back to another Brood War ladder cast. This time we've got DeWalt. Running a bit of a gauntlet versus Korean pro players. If you don't know who DeWalt is, he is a professional Russian player who's been venturing over to Korea for quite some time. He's been attempting to get into the SSL and the ASL before that. Hasn't quite made it in, but he's been close. He's been about the closest out of all the foreigners. I think Xiao Shui may be the only one who's been closer than him. Uh, maybe Mihu. But aside from Chinese, uh, players and Korean players like he's the closest foreign player to uh, reach the SSL or he's gone the deepest in the SSL qualifiers anyway his opponent today action uh, we are also going to watch some games with him versus shine and also sharp so it should be a lot of fun guys strap in we'll see what this Russian Protoss player can do versus the top Korean pros in 2024 all these games were played in september of 2024 so just keep in mind that these are very recent replays as we get into this one dewalt gonna be blocking that early drone trying to prevent that from setting up the hatchery but he's not going to be able to prevent that for long six lings are on the way here and so he will be pushed back. He's getting that crucial information though. He sees the number of lings that were produced. And he is going to be nice and comfy behind his two cannons here. Won't take any damage, that's for sure. Seeing what's popping out from action. I think he's going to be okay. I think action's actually going to be fine with this as well. When you see double cannon... Uh, even if you produce six slings, as long as you don't lose any of them to the cannons, you're pretty happy with the way that things have gone. So he's going to run right up here. Looks like he will lose one. But just one ling loss is not too much of a problem. The third hatch will go down. 13 supply. Going to go ahead and grab that gas as well. Everything looking fine here for action. Back at home, DeWalt should be taking his own gas here shortly. As this gateway is coming online. You'll want to get out a quick Corsair. Because he's not going to have this information for long. One thing that building these six lings early. Gives you aside from the pressure of potentially running by. Or just doing a killing blow. If they're too, clo uh, too slow on that initial cannon. Is that you're also going to have these lings. To potentially knock out the scouting probe. At the very least, you should be able to prevent this from running by into your main and scouting out exactly what you're going to be going for. So a layer starts here at home. Cybernetic score on the way. Let's see the timings here between DeWalt and Action, between the Corsair and the Scourge that are likely to come from Action to defend this early Corsair probe just meandering here at the front looking for opportunities to slip by but i doubt action will allow anything of the sort making sure that there's no additional lings or any craziness coming out of action right now doing a good job of keeping that alive so important this skill really is a bit of a mini game that only exists in brood war just keeping that probe alive for as long as possible Whatever information it can glean will certainly be useful later on. As the Zealot comes into the third, watch for DeWalt to try and slip by these lings. See, now's the perfect opportunity. Just go into the main. Very well played here. He's going to run this Zealot behind the mineral patches, most likely. Um, looks like he's going to get blocked. Okay, might go behind the minerals now. No, nope, just going to loop back around. But he gets the probe into the main. And that was really the goal for this Zealot. Now he can probably tuck himself behind the minerals. Maybe go for a drone kill here. Oh, that drone right there is quite low. He's looking for it, but seems like he won't be able to find it. One Zealot given up here. 
for all of the information in the world, absolutely worth it for DeWalt. And what will his response be? Just plus one air attack, one Corsair on the way, plus one ground attack is coming as well. But the follow up, Citadel, how many gateways are we going to add on? When are we going to start to have that Zealot explosion? What's the timing here from DeWalt to try and put that pressure back onto action once again? Some of these overlords are being hidden. We've got the Hydroden coming up. That first Corsair making its way across the map. May just stop and kill this one right here. He knows that there's no Hydroden, so there's no reason to fly all the way through once again. We could just... Okay, I guess he's going to go ahead and, and take the free scout here. He's going to see everything. And probably won't be able to get any overlord kills. It is what it is. He just gives up the opportunity to kill an overlord. In order to get all the information for a second time. He's completely mapped out the build from action. It's a likely six hatch hydra. We'll probably see another hatchery laid down in just a few moments. Some gateway explosion going to be happening here soon as well. He drops one cannon in the main mineral line just to prevent any scourge snipes as the Stargate produces these Corsairs. You've got to be careful. Make sure that you're not losing any of these and opening up a opportunity for a big mutilus switch. For now. Just pure Hydra pumping out for action and everything looking just about dead even in this game. Ooh, bit of a mistake there. Not mining three on gas in the main is quite painful. DeWalt not noticing that just yet and he may not notice that for what could be the rest of this game. Which would be quite impactful actually. You can see we're starting Storm. We need to build some Templar as well. Get them out to the front to deal with this initial big group of Hydras that's going to start to come out. He's going to go up to about 35 workers, pump a bunch of Hydras, maybe two to three groups of Hydras, and then back into drones in order to get up to 45, at which point he'll take a fourth and... Perhaps start to transition into Lurker. But before then, we could see a bunch of Hydras come out. And threaten the front. And if there's just no Templar at the front with Storm. Could be in a lot of trouble. You can see he's still... Okay, there we go. He fixed it. He fixed it. Okay. I was going to continue to talk about that. As long as he didn't fix it, it is kind of crazy how important that uh, just that one single probe missing on the gas can be in a game of PVZ but I'm glad that he fixed that little error now he can get into his mass gateway production he has enough Templar here to hold off uh, the couple of groups of Hydras that have been made by action action grabbing his third gas as well has lurker upgrade on the way we're almost at that 10 minute mark it's about time for action to take a fourth base here as he's already surpassed that 45 drone count he has the income to make that happen and there goes the drone heading over here to the fourth base it'll be that mineral only fourth which can be a little harder to defend but it will allow you to take this fifth a little bit easier once you lock down this whole quadrant of the map you can hold everything off by just holding this one spot this spot here and this spot over here it's quite strong for Terran versus Protoss on this map one two three four five bases with only three different locations to defend it's also very good for either Protoss or Zerg. And see DeWalt going to take this next for his third. Maybe this one for his fourth and this one for his fifth. 
A little bit harder to extend out into another quadrant of the map, though. You can see DeWalt already having a DT over here, just to make sure that that can't happen just yet. 50 drones now total for action as he begins to pile out lurkers onto the field. Not too concerned about the third base that's going up for DeWalt right now. More interested in looking for that fourth. And that's probably where we'll see him try to contest. We've got the Hive on the way now. Additional Evo Chambers should be short, uh, quickly coming up behind this. He's got one Evo Chamber in the main. It's actually not researching anything at the moment, but should start that pretty soon. There's that plus one armor coming online. Observatory is ready here for dewalt will he switch into reaver soon is he going to take a fourth right away it appears like that's the direction he's heading coming up here to take this 12 o'clock with one single probe while starting to push out on the map at the same time see if he can put on any pressure with this army because action is looking gigantic 135 supply a lot of links are being mixed in now as the lurker number continues to swell still 700 gas in the bank he doesn't have that fourth gas just yet but you kind of need to uh, get fully into hive tech it's not a hundred percent necessary but it will help you out quite a bit because there's so many different upgrades you're going to need remember the uh, successive upgrades from these Evo Chambers also cost more gas uh, as the, you know, you get higher and higher up that tech tree. Uh, the Defiler Mound costs gas. All the Defiler upgrades cost a lot of gas. Specifically the uh, Plague upgrade, which is super important in this matchup. Now, DeWalt is looking to put a little pressure on here. Nice egg blocks on this ramp. But the storms are doing some serious work, damaging a lot of these lurkers, and the zealots coming up the high ground are going to trade out with those pretty well. Some Templar coming up the ramp, actually getting picked off. Now it's time to retreat. We don't want to get surrounded with this huge army that's coming out on the map. We don't... We can't be losing these dragoons right now. And DeWalt's heading in kind of an awkward direction. He needs to back up right now. So many forces heading up and around this army. DeWalt is not retreating efficiently. He's losing a lot of these Dragoons. Gonna cast some storms here and start to run back, but that was way too many losses of these key critical units. The Dragoons kind of bouncing off of each other as they were trying to get around this circle in the center of the map. Now, DeWalt in full retreat and action is banging at the front door reavers are being produced and the space in the top center has cannons but it doesn't have any probes at it right now storms here are necessary for holding off this attack he's running out of time here to cast them but no energy for those templar are we about to see dewalt just tap out here he's being completely overwhelmed in the natural some pretty decent storms go down and Dragoon rallies come forward, but the uh, Lurkers run up to break the wall and GG is called. The Walt taps out. Action is victorious. A pretty straightforward win there from Action. It was unfortunate the way the Walt decided to retreat from this position. A lot of times... I've heard that Protoss players say... Um, pro, pro Protoss players... Uh, talk about how we need to cast the storm and then back away with the uh, the main bulk of the army intact. The Dragoons and Templar need to stay alive. And we need to trade out just a few Zealots and a few Storms to get some damage before backing up. But DeWalt kind of failed to do that. He lost a couple of Templar coming up this ramp. And then he moved down thinking that he could maybe go in front of this opening, but action was already on the move and he caught the retreat of those Dragoons, taking a really great trade. Unfortunately, 
DeWalt is not going to be able to take this one, but you know, he had a pretty decent, a reasonable plan here, and he was looking pretty good right up until that engagement. Maybe he can do better against Shine. We're going to find out in game number two. Let's go check it out. All right, same map here for game number two. Pantheon once again with DeWalt in the bottom left, opening with the gateway expansion this time against Shine here in the bottom right. Who's going to be getting his 11 hatch down? Could be an opportunity for DeWalt to deal some damage. He's going to have the Zealot. Uh, accompanied by the Probe. To potentially do something. Sending the Probe behind the Mineral Patches. Trying to bait Shine. Into pulling pro or pulling Drones to actually uh, fight a potential Cannon Rush. But now that he's got the Overlord over the Natural. He sees that it's Gateway first. He will not be phased. He will not be pulling drones. DeWalt trying to get in here and deal a little damage. If you don't know, two probe hits and two zealot hits will kill a drone in the early game before any upgrades come online. And so it's either three zealot hits or two probe hits and, is, and two zealot hits. So it, it really increases the amount of damage that you can do. It's actually hitting through these mineral patches, which is something that I see a lot of Protoss players do. That They'll actually usually go here and then try to hit through the wall. That's usually what I see, like right there. Okay, looks like he wasn't able to do it, but the Zealot is coming into the main. We have six Lings on the way. Oh, four, actually eight Lings on the way. Let's see if he can get this. Oh, the one drone that was low on that HP is actually going to be pulled back. Gets one drone. There we go. Very nice play there from DeWalt. Getting a drone here already. Looks like the probe will go down. And the Zealot should be short, uh, falling shortly after. Can't really do too much with this. Will get surrounded and killed. This Zealot's probably going to have to make a run for the natural. Maybe get behind here. Uh, best he can do right now. But killing a drone is definitely worthwhile. He's made the most out of this early gateway expansion. And he's going to try his best to get some value out of the second Zealot as well. It kind of dies uh, pretty early. And so Shine will be able to switch back into full-on drone production. But the advantage of doing that really fast uh, expansion with the 11 hatch has been mostly mitigated. The advantage is kind of gone here at this point. Stuck at 19 of 19 supply. We've all been there. The Overlord is about to pop though. And so he will begin to make drones once again. Hydroden is coming out. Will DeWalt push and try to glean information that could help him find out about this? Really important that he gets over here and learns of what the teching plans are for Shine. He's probably going to get blocked by these a few lings coming out. Just one ling going to be broken off to chase that probe for now. And three zealots will head out on the map. Okay. So he's going to go and try to put some pressure on. Let's see if he can get in there and see that hydroden or not. Shine is a pretty sneaky boy. I imagine we're going to see him pump out a bunch more lings and... Potentially shut this down. Actually, it seems like he's trying to call the bluff right now. And he actually calls the bluff accurately. Because DeWalt just turns around with these four Zealots. Um, if he had pulled the trigger and just went into the natural, I think the four Zealots could have made some serious pro progress. And he might have been able to slip uh, at least one of the Zealots by into the main to figure out that this is a Hydra Den. But he wasn't able to do that. And so I'm a little worried about DeWalt now. It's all well and good to pump fake with your zealots and try to force a bunch of lings, but if a Hydra bus like this is coming, you really need to know about it, even if it means losing some of your zealots. He just doesn't have any information at the moment. Now he's going to get in here to the extra base, and all he sees is a drone popping. This is kind of bad. A second cannon does start. He kills a drone already. 
Hydras are making their way to the front now. Gonna start a second cannon, but the Hydras are already here. This is quite a dangerous situation that DeWalt finds himself in. He's got one kill with this Zealot. He's forced away a lot of the drones, which is fantastic. But he is in real threat, in real danger right now of just straight up losing this game to a Hydra Bust. Sending the first Corsair around the map. You'll see that there's actually a hatchery on the way. And that is a good indicator that we're not interested as Shine here in just all in Hydra Busting. Rather, the plan is to break down the wall and then transition into a full on macro play. Now, as that Cybernetic Core falls, I think DeWalt's going to be pretty happy that he built the forge in his main. He still has that plus one upgrade uh, rolling along and it's actually almost complete now. The Hydras can't really bust in here with four cannons and four zealots. It's a bit too much to contend with. With this few number of Hydras, he's just going to back off. Give DeWalt some space, and DeWalt really didn't overcommit with cannons, so I'm actually feeling pretty decent about DeWalt's situation. You can see, plus one just now started for Shine, and this is usually the sacrifice that has to be made when it comes to doing a little bit of a Hydra play like this in the early game. You have to give up something somewhere, and... That upgrade is the sacrificial part of this build. The thing that had to be given up to get these early Hydralis out, of course. The drone count's not quite where it could be. It sh it'll soon be up to 45 as he adds on a few more. You can see going up to a 44 here. Once these drones pop out, he'll add a few more. Get up to that 45 count. Maybe grab this third gas. Uh, possibly start Lurker upgrade and continue to pump out Hydras off of six hatch. So his economy is looking strong. It's just that DeWalt, I think, has a pretty good read on what's going on and should be able to min max his build somewhat. As you can see, no cannon in the main. He's not building any more Corsairs either. He's getting four Templar right now, knowing that he can put some pressure on with these Zealots. At the same time, pumping out Templar, and he will be completely safe. He has the uh, Dragoon range on the way. Robotics coming up as well. This is a much better situation overall, I'd say, from our last game. Even though last game was pretty even, I would say in this game... He's in even he's in better than an even situation. I would say he's actually a little bit ahead, just slightly ahead of Shine. And his upgrades are gonna be faster. His tech is a bit faster. We still don't have Lurker upgrade done. He can dive on top of this. He's killed some drones in this game. Kind of slowed down the economy a little bit of Shine. And he just he knows exactly what he needs right now. Uh, to take a fight with Shine, and he's going to have that uh, army being put together in just a few moments. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eight gateway count. Coming online for DeWalt. A fourth base about to be taken here right at the 10 minute mark. As you do, 57 drones for Shine. My goodness. That is a good number of drones. Uh, at this point in the game, another hatch maybe in the top right, potentially. A lot of spreading of the overlords going out. Got one zealot out here as well. Where's that Corsair? The two Corsairs up here, or three Corsairs at the natural. It's just sending them around the map. Can be really annoying for the Zerg player. When they're trying to deal with everything else that's happening and maxing up their... Or building up their army and putting down bases and macroing if they're also getting hit their overlords are getting hit around the map and they have to you know run around try to deal with that it can be quite intense two more oh evolution chamber and a queen's nest on the way he did end up getting the spire that's right we saw a scourge earlier 
So he has that as a, an available option for him. He doesn't have to build mutas, but he can at least add on a few scourge here and there and make sure that he doesn't get dropped. That's what this is for right here. If there was a drop coming in, this is perfectly positioned to shut that down. And so Shine is just continuing to macro like crazy, getting his links out. This is actually looking pretty darn similar to what we saw uh, in that game versus action, honestly. Shine is playing this in nearly the same way. Pretty, pretty darn similar here. The way he's setting up his bases and the timing on his fourth. And getting set up with lurkers here in the middle. Building lurkers over on this high ground to buy time in case a attack comes that direction. DeWalt on the map now. Bullying away this Zerg force. Oh! Very nice around there. Sniping a Dragoon. Absolutely worth it. Oh, a second Dragoon. Hold up. This small groups of Lings are doing some serious damage. Might even be able to get in over to this third base. Possibly pick off a cannon or two. Everything being set up for Shine now. Plenty of lurkers in defense. I'm going to transfer those workers over to the third base. And well, where will he attack into? I want to see just walking forward, trading with the army, casting some storms, and then backing away once again. Let's see if he can get on top of this. This is an amazing storm if you can get it. You know none of these units are hotkeyed. They're so clumped up. They're all in the rally point. It is amazing if you can drop a storm on that. There we go. One storm goes down. A second storm here clearing out a lot of these lings. Those are some very, very good storms. Oh, storm something. Okay, he throws out another storm but loses the Templar. That's not what we want. We just want to trade with our storms and back away. Keeping the Templar alive is critical right now. All right, going to have to back away from this position. A few more storms get laid down. He has some in reserve, but it's time to back away now. Dewalt doing the right thing, just moving out of this situation. He's macroing behind this as well, but he's actually falling behind Shine uh, in his macro at the moment. Lings are moving around the top side of the map. A Nidus has been placed in top right. Shine is just going to keep growing, growing like mad while DeWalt is sitting here on three bases trying to trade with him. Uh, Shine is just pumping out links like crazy. He's now got Consume on the way. He doesn't have plus one uh, melee attack just yet. Hasn't uh, had time to upgrade that uh, at this point, but he should be getting another Evolution Chamber anytime now he does have that actually in the main base but these links are not going to do too much damage oh he does have plus one okay he's got plus one he just needs plus two to start let's take a look at the upgrades here for protoss one two so actually pretty uh comparable upgrades at this point oh my goodness these dragoons are going to run through this army ouch pretty painful stuff there for our protoss player so it's high, holding this high ground for the moment. Going to try to move his entire army down here to defend this choke point. See if he can get a good storm there. Reasonable storm next to the cannons is going to deny some of those links from getting forward. Instead of coming down here to defend the 6 o'clock, it looks like DeWalt's actually going to move towards the natural. Casting some storms, but the dark swarm will help to clear this and everything goes down. At 6 o'clock, DeWalt is missing a base at this point. He really does need additional bases if he wants to continue to fight. Shine just taking too much of the map. He has the entirety of the top right now. And a good supply advantage. Going to be giving him a hard time. 
and surrounding on some of these dragoons, picking them off, getting the Templar on the retreat as well. We've only got one Templar in this group, and it's not even got a storm at this point. Three more temps pop out. The storm boys are lacking in this army, so DeWalt will have to send that out to, to meet up with the remainder of the forces. Great defensive position here. We could even make this into a spore to make things more difficult or a sunken to add on some extra damage. These three Templar heading through the middle of the map are going to get caught. This is probably the big story of this game right now. The fact that those go down is really painful for DeWalt. He's going to try to break this high ground. He has one storm here. No, he doesn't have any storm here. Oh boy. If he has storm, he can cast on this high ground or up this on this ramp and take a pretty decent trade, but he's just missing out on the storms. And this army is going to get completely surrounded. This army gets plagued. All of these dragoons are going to go down and DeWalt is going to have to tap out. GG is called DeWalt. Getting rolled over. We've got another game versus Shine. Game number three. We're going to hop right in. A second game with Shine versus DeWalt. A little chatter here. Oh, I thought there was going to be more. Anyway. <laughs> Kickback is our map. DeWalt down here in the bottom right. Shine in the top right. We've seen some pretty cool strategies from Shine on this map. So I'm looking forward to see what he wants to pull out. I feel like we got a good glimpse in that last game. And actually in the game versus action as well. Uh, into where uh, DeWalt is struggling against these Korean Zerg players. And that's in the macro mid and late game. Having a hard time keeping up with just the masses of units that Zerg players are able to pump out. I think we need to add a little bit more chaos into our gameplay if we want to be able to take out any of these strong Zerg players. Got to get over there and deal some damage early. Try to make things wild. Throw some drops in maybe. DT drop in the main. Something like that. That'll just throw off the Zerg player and make it harder for them to get into that macro beast mode that we've seen so far. 9-10 gate or 10-10 gate coming here from DeWalt. This is actually this is pretty strong. I like it. I wouldn't like it if I was playing against it, but I think it's a good idea for DeWalt in this game. He's going to have a pretty sizable gap here in the middle, but I think with two Zealots you can hold that. And so we'll see some serious pressure coming from DeWalt in the early game. And he has a very nice wall to, to fall back to. If he needs to. And two bases inside of his main. To take after he does some damage. If he can get in there and deal some damage. With the double zealot production. He'll be able to fall back. Hold this wall. Build some cannons back here. And just take double expansion. It's, it's strong. This is a strong good map and I think a decent strategy what we're seeing from DeWalt spawning pool is nearing completion one thing you can say about this map for Zerg in this position is that you can put a sunk in here and you can cover both your bases with that sunken right you can just stop the zealots from running by with lings and you can use the the sunken to try and turn the tides of that fight Five sets of lings are on the way. Got ten lings coming out. Drone did manage to scout. No kills on these zealots. Heading up onto the high ground here. This will indeed add some chaos into this game. That's for sure. Zealots uh, hiding in different areas. Holding ramps. Hiding behind mineral patches. Ooh. Doesn't quite take the best trade there. We'll try to get in and get, get some kills on a few of these drones. One hit, two hits. Sunken Colony here is going to be a bit of a pain for DeWalt to deal with. But he could try to run by it here. If he gets a few more 
zealots together. Still a lot of lings are out now. It's only two hatch. What we're seeing from shine at the moment. So not a huge amount of production. But enough to pump out a lot of lings to get this counter attack going. A nexus on the high ground gets made. Oh, he's going to mine this mineral patch, boys. He is about to mine the mineral patch. And he should be able to open that right up. A beautiful play here by Shine. Mining through that mineral patch means this wall just became much, much larger and more difficult to deal with. Can he put down like a pylon in there or something? He actually needs another part to this wall. He wants to try and save his life. Two more zealots are about to pop out, but this gateway is getting low. He's actually going to have to take this engage here soon. He does take the engage. He's got the uh, shield battery to help out, but there goes the gateway. Gateway has fallen. Another use of that shield battery as the zealots take this fight. The probes are trying to help, but they're kind of too far behind right now. Another zealot should pop out soon, but GG is called as the lings flood forward. DeWalt is forced out of this game. Ouch. A good number of losses here versus these Korean pros. It's kind of expected that the Korean pros are going to be able to take down players like DeWalt foreign pros, but every now and then we see DeWalt take these guys out. Just not today, unfortunately. We've got one more game here, guys. It's a PVT with Sharp. That's coming right up. All right, our final game of the night. Sharp spawning here in the top right-hand corner. DeWalt in the top left. It's been having a tough day. A real tough day. But I think we can all sympathize with that. It is probably the hardest matchup for Protoss uh, PVZ, depending on your point of view, I suppose. It is a very volatile match, but it didn't feel that volatile in the games we saw of DeWalt today. It felt like, for the most part, he was able to play his game. And we got into some pretty decent macro positions, but... These Zergs, man, they are able to pump out so many units. And it didn't really feel doable, any of the attacks that DeWalt was putting together. I can tell you from experience that those defenses, they sometimes just fall apart so hard, so quickly. It's like, how do you... I, I can't imagine how anyone could defend an attack like that. But action and shine making it look pretty much unbeatable and so I guess I have to reevaluate my opinion of what can and can't be held as Zerg and now here in PVT opening with a gateway expansion sharp gasless fast expand not his typical build but he is capable of pulling out pretty much anything at the highest level. He is so strong right now. And so robust. He is definitely a contender for the SSL title. I don't know how much faith we have in, have in him right now. But last season, I had he had my full confidence. I truly thought this guy was going to be able to take that uh, last season of... SSL, but he fell a little bit short. Still going to be cheering for him this season. Especially if he makes it into the round of four, which I am going to attend. By the way, I am going to South Korea uh, on October the 21st, I believe it is. The round of four uh, for the SSL this season. If you're going to be there, let me know. Uh, come join the Discord. You can talk to me directly. We can uh, set up some sort of meetup. I've already got a few people who are going to come and, and hang out, but there's always room for more. We can make like a, make a big group of guys who are into the channel to come and hang out and watch the games together. That would be fun. Maybe go to the bar after. 
Anyways, I digress. We've got Nexus here. Finishing up now for DeWalt. His uh, range is on the way. We'll make use of this first Dragoon to just punish this wall a little bit. Punish this bunker a little bit. Just a little semi run by there to get vision of the command center. Making sure that there's no uh, two fact coming behind this of course there will be two factories behind this but they are much slower than if there was no cc of course bunker just two marines in there a little run by here scv gonna try and make its way into the main but blocked by the probes that were on the transfer and so he will be able to clean this up without any more scouting information being gleaned by sharp however we don't know if there was like a factory or something out on the map so he's got to be careful you know sometimes a player like sharp will actually build a factory out here and while you you've got all your dragoons at the front of his natural he's got one factory making a tank and another factory making vultures that will just immediately hit your base so Got to be mindful of a fact like that, especially if an SCV comes from a random location or a random direction into your base. Looks like he's actually going to send all the dragons across the map. With full confidence that there's nothing coming in, I wouldn't be so sure, but since I'm the spectator, I know that that's not happening right now. And so this is in fact the right choice. He can get a little bit more damage onto this bunker, and he's got four dragoons, which could snipe this tank potentially oh he's gonna go for it he gets three hits off but no more and so this tank will be repaired and can be brought forward to hit this low hp dragoon in a moment gotta be very careful with these dragons he's gonna go for the dive again no nope. not gonna happen now the dragoons are kind of low with two more tanks popping out we could see a three tank push could see that is he going to make vultures? Vultures, mines, and speed. Plus one is on the way. More tanks. Okay, so he's actually going to play this a little bit more safe. Third base on the way. It's like a six minute third base. Pretty darn aggressive and greedy here from DeWalt. Going to send his Reaver across the map. Getting a third base on just one gateway is a little bit wild. If this was, you know, multiple vultures popping and he just went for a three tank push. Uh, that could potentially kill you. Depends on how the Reaver does, of course, but there's definitely potential for a kill there. Or at least a big amount of damage. So taking a slight risk. DeWalt going to attempt to get ahead um, economically with this play. Dealing quite a bit of damage with the Reaver on the, the bunker here. Going to try and get some SCVs. He does get two. Looks like he can kill the bunker now. So the bunker goes down. Takes quite a lot of damage on this Reaver though. Some of that damage coming from the high ground tanks. Which is a bit annoying. He gets another shot off here. One Marine goes down. Turret should be falling. But the siege upgrade will be finished in just a moment. And the moment that siege finishes, it's time to retreat. Good on him. DeWalt backs up. Adding on more gateways now. A second Reaver is out. So he'll go back to pick that up now. Start to add on more gateways in the main base while switching into Arbiter. Interestingly enough. We don't often see Reaver into Arbiter, but here we go. We're going to be using the Reavers to slow down and buy time for this Arbiter. Wow, that's actually it. That's a wall? I had no idea. Probe can't get out of there. Let's see. Pulling the tanks forward here. It's going up to five factory. Are we going to see a CC? I think so. I think we'll see a CC here shortly. Plus one is about to finish. He should be starting plus one armor in just a moment. Turret ring is being set up at the same time. And this army is looking pretty formidable. 
for sharp sharp is pushing out and forward it's a pretty reasonable shot on those reavers but taking little damage zero kills on that seven kills on the other keeping the observer alive is pretty nice here for dewalt hiding the arbiter tribunal down here uh, at the third base kind of a, a funny move there by him a lot of gateways now but no zealot speed just yet which is a bit of a problem no zealot speed and it's just five five factory push i guess no additional uh cc here oh losing one of the reavers Yikes, this could actually become really bad if he isn't able to slow down this push any further. He does not have Zealot Speed. And his gateway count, I mean, although it is exploding and getting higher, he needs to buy some more time. He's actually going to make a bunch of DTs now. Try to utilize the DTs to force out some scans. And if he can force some scans... Oh, this should be a big shot. Oh, wow. An immense hit there. Oh, maybe you can get some mines to connect. Not bad. Another one. Okay, pretty good. Pretty good. Lowering that HP on the siege tank by quite a lot. More DTs running out. Try to force some more scans here before the fight. How much energies do we have? Uh, we've got enough for about three scans. First Arbiter should be coming out in a moment. Yeah, it's very, very close. But will he be able to hold on to his third base? Sharp has made it over here with pretty good timing. Good scan there as well. He's still got two more scans remaining. Zealots are going to come forward. They do have that speed now, finally. Army is moving through the middle of the map. Could take out these tanks here on the right-hand side, but... Those two tanks may buy enough time for this army to deal its damage. Here we go. Arbiter coming forward. Doesn't have a observer to deal with this. Uh-oh. Probes are going to start to die here pretty quickly. A lot of probes are going to end up going down if he doesn't pull them back to the natural. Vultures are making their way in. They might be able to snag probes that are on the retreat. Could also try to dive into the main or the natural. Laying down mines here out in the front. These vultures have yet to be cleared up. Army coming from behind right now. Gonna run right in on top of this, but the mines clear up most of everything. Ooh, this mine as well. Not actually connecting. This mine might get a big hit though. Oh, no. That mine also gets picked off. Some more probes do fall though, and 41 probes remain at this point. Still has his third nexus. Still has this Arbiter. That'll be gaining energy over time. But the probe count is very low at this point. And we don't have an Observer either. So we can't completely clear out. Oof. Can't completely clear out the mines and vultures that are blocking these uh, probes from moving between the two bases. He's going to come forward now. Oh! Okay. Oh! Okay, again. Saving his, his own skin here. Vulture's running in. Time to block. Good job. DeWalt still alive. But barely. He's just hardly holding on right now. As Sharp puts down a third base. Now, one thing we can say for Sharp is that... Or one thing we can say for DeWalt, excuse me, is that Sharp does not have a great upgrade timing. He's... Put a lot of eggs in the five uh, factory basket. Trying to get over there and deal the damage uh, with that initial attack. And, you know, he, dealed, he dealt quite a bit of damage. However, is it going to be enough to where the follow-up push can deal the killing blow? Because his upgrades are not looking so hot and we've got recall. We should have stasis as well not sure how many arbiters we're gonna have with this next fight but 
You should have at least a couple of spells to work with. Arbiter is right over here. Kind of a funny position for that to be in. Maybe he can get a recall uh, onto this third base and shut it down. He's actually... Wow, he's got a lot of his army in the main. I'm not sure what that's all about. But here comes that Arbiter. Looking to fly into the main base. I think we need to turn around here. Oh my gosh. There's the recall. He recalls a probe in amongst all of this stuff. And then this is not looking good. It feels like Sharp was completely in on this. He knew exactly what was coming and where. And DeWalt really just fed into him. That entire army. Probe's heading down towards the bottom left. He will have the fourth base online. But this is not a very well-timed fourth base. This is pretty slow with how the game's gone. It's not surprising, but it's a little bit unfortunate for DeWalt clearing out some mines. He actually needs a pile on wall on this high ground, or at least dragoons to, to defend this. Looks like he will get some dragoons over to this area to slow this down. An amount of tanks out here in the front. He's also got science vessel. So he might be able to get an EMP going. Oh, he doesn't have energy for an EMP just yet. This is a great position to get that EMP off in, though. He almost has it. He's got it. 100 energy. There it is. He gets the EMP on that critical Arbiter. The second Arbiter on the field. Not going to get any spells, any value out of that unit. Pretty unfortunate here for DeWalt. And Shine going to use this opportunity with no Arbiter spells available to push across the map and try to end this right here and now. And I think he might be able to do it. GG is called. He knows it. DeWalt just going to tap out here. And Sharp handles this guy brilliantly. Really, really well done. I don't expect anything less, though, from a player of the caliber of Sharp. He is just ticking away at such a high level right now he is so impressive with the way that he's been playing and you can just see from start to finish in this game he had everything dialed in really really well he played the most modern style uh, that we have for Terran versus Protoss that five factory uh, one one timing attack into the third base uh, and further upgrades he put a lot of pressure onto DeWalt and killed a ton of his probes while killing his observers and forcing uh, kind of weird interactions here in between the natural and the third. Very heavy on the harassment. Very brutal to deal with as a Protoss player. And to DeWalt's credit, he did hold on against that initial attack. It's just the constant harassment afterwards and eventual uh, EMP shutdown oh and of course that uh, fr that frightful recall into the main the ill-fated recall into the main certainly didn't do him any favors you can see that DeWalt certainly has the skill to stand up to these Protoss Korean these Korean Protoss players but doesn't quite have the full understanding and maybe the full uh, range of play necessary to take down these guys. I hope he continues to develop. I'll be checking him out on his channel. You guys should too. I'll link you guys to his Twitch. You can go and cheer him on as the strongest foreign pro, pro player that we have right now. Uh, aside from players in China, of course. A lot of those guys are on the come up at the moment. But... This guy definitely deserves your attention, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.